Hello, wonderful sixth graders. I am here to present to you lesson 7.1, our first lesson for the week. And our first lesson this week is a nonfiction article called Fear Prompts Teens to Act Impulsively. Um, the things you need to have out, you need to have a PDF copy of the article, Fear Prompts Teens to Act Impulsively. You need a sheet of paper, and something to write with, and then you need your Microsoft Forms for your exit ticket. Um, our agenda, we're going to make some personal connections to impulses. We're going to talk about main idea, and we're going to read the article, and then at the end we're going to do an exit ticket. So let's look at our, our objectives. Students will be able to summarize the central idea and key points of an informational article. Students will be able to analyze the structure of informational text and determine how the structure contributes to the development of ideas. And last but not least, students will be able to infer word meaning from context. At the end of this lesson, you will take a Microsoft Forms quiz where you analyze the nonfiction text for central idea and form your own opinion. So let's talk about some of the key vocabulary that we're gonna need for this lesson. The first thing that we need is impulse control. Impulse control is the ability to overcome human emotions so that people don't react in ways that we know are inappropriate. So think about a time when you were in class and a teacher said something that made you really mad. Your first impulse might be to yell at her or to storm out of the class, but you know that if you storm out of the class or you yell at a teacher, you're gonna get in more trouble. So you just take a deep breath and like push that impulse down. That's impulse control. You are controlling that urge that you have. So the sentence that I have is, as a teenager, I had to work on my impulse control so I didn't say something I didn't mean. You know, that's something that I think we all have to learn how to do over time, like be really easy to like pop off at that teacher or whatever, or your parents. But sometimes you just have to learn like, I might think it, but it doesn't mean I need to say it. A brain scan. We talked about brain scans when we uh, read Phineas Gage. So the brain scan uses imaging technology to view the structures inside the brain. And the sentence that we have here is doctors use brain scans to see the different parts of the brain. And an MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. This is a medical exam that uses magnets to obtain an image of the brain. So you can see here, this is an MRI machine. It looks kind of like a tube. And if you've ever had an MRI, you know that like they like put you on this table and slide you in. And then you can hear these really, really loud noises. It almost sounds like a jackhammer is uh, above your head. You can hear like ka tonk ding, 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 ding. And it makes all these really weird loud sounds. And those really weird loud sounds, that's the actual magnet turning around inside the machine and taking that picture of either your brain or your leg or whatever body part they need to see. So my sentence says, when I hit my head, I needed an MRI to see if I had a concussion, right? So that's the primary type of MRI. There's also a thing called a functional MRI. And a functional MRI is when they put like little sensors on your brain or on your head, not your brain. And those sensors can actually get a live image of what your brain is doing. So in this article, we talk about both an MRI, a regular one with the big machine and the, the functional one with the sensors. IQ, IQ stands for intelligence quotient. This is a score that is derived from one of several standardized tests designed to assess human intelligence. Now, it is not the only uh, test that shows how smart you are. There are actually a lot of studies that say IQ is somewhat outdated. We're not going to get into all of that today, but just know that an IQ test is a test that scientists um, use to get an idea of how intelligent a person is. 
So my teachers told me I had a high IQ, but that my grades weren't very good because I didn't always turn in my work. So the person in this example is saying that they're pretty smart, but just because they're smart doesn't mean they get good grades. In fact, they don't get good grades because they're not turning in their work. All right, so let's start reading our article. And it is called Fear Prompts Teens to Act Impulsively. Impulsively means to act without thinking or to act without thinking about the cause and effect. A threatened teen may not back down. One reason, the teenage brain appears to undergo a rewiring that can prompt this response to fear. That's the finding of new research presented at a meeting on November 10th, 2013. Its authors say their findings may help explain why criminal activity peaks during teen years. They reported their observations in San Diego at the Society for Neuroscience meeting. Neuroscience deals with the structure or function of the brain and other parts of the nervous system. All right, so let's think about what we learned in these first two paragraphs. So the rewiring means like literally the paths in your brain that connect um, change when you hit your teenage years. So this rewiring has started in your brains already and it's gonna continue to happen all the way up until you're about 25. Um, and the process of that rewiring um, causes teens to react differently to fear. And people say that this may help explain why criminal activity peaks during these years. Now, this is not an excuse, right? You should still know right from wrong, but it helps explain it sometimes. All right, let's keep reading. Christina Cottle of Wild Cornell Medical College in New York City and her coworkers tested impulse control in 83 people. Remember, impulse control is the ability to like not do things you want to do because you know that they're not the right thing to do. And this is an ability to overcome our emotions so we don't react in ways we shouldn't. The test volunteers ranged in age from 6 to 29. Cottle's team asked each to press a button when a photo of a happy face quickly flashed onto a computer screen. The scientist said not to press the button when a threatening face shows up. So in this experiment, they probably have a little button. And when a, they see a face that's happy, they press the button. And when they see a face that's threatening or angry, they don't press the button. People between the ages of 13 and 17 were more likely than at any other age to push the button when shown a threatening face a face with threatening expression, I apologize. This reaction was viewed as evidence of poor impulse control. So in other words, people between these ages are more likely to have poor, a, uh, a lack of an ability to control pushing a button, but more than just pushing a button in other situations too. Scientists wanted some idea of what was happening in the volunteers' brains during the test, so they performed brain scans, remember that's those pictures of the brain, using what is known as functional magnetic resonance imaging. That's the thing with the sensors, right, that we talked about that helps you take a picture of the brain. These scans showed that when people looked at faces, activity sometimes increased in a brain area called the orbital frontal cortex. Remember, we talked about your frontal cortex is right here. In fact, it only increased when someone successfully avoided pushing the button. That suggests that this part of the brain helps to curb. Curb means to stop the impulse to react inappropriately, Cardell Cottle reported. Okay, so this is really sciencey, but basically all you need to understand is this part of your brain, that prefrontal cortex or the orbital frontal cortex, helps you stop impulse control. And we know that the teenage brain, this is where all that rewiring is happening in your frontal cortex. 
Her team doesn't know why younger children don't show the same poor impulse control when viewing a threatening face. More studies could determine how parts of the brain that control behavior grow and change during the teen years, Caudill said. Her team's finding also may help explain the recent trends in teen fighting. Roughly five out of every 100 teen girls in the United States and twice as many boys report experiencing serious violence, a recent study found. It linked that violent to drops in IQ. Remember that's that how that test that shows excuse me that test that shows how smart you are. If confirmed, latest data would suggest that parents and schools should realize how vulnerable. We are going to talk about this word later in the week, but vulnerable means like um, susceptible to danger how vulnerable teens are to behaviors that might pose harm to their still developing brains, right? So we know that teens are more likely to fight. Now that doesn't mean that's okay, but it means that as schools and parents and adults, what we should do is like understand that and help give teens more options. Um, maybe more programs in school, maybe more guest speakers, maybe more outlets to discuss issues you're having and like talk about them so that the issues you're having don't end up leading to fights. This is something that your class is actually really, really good about. Your class does not get into as many fights and hopefully that will continue as you go into seventh and eighth and ninth grades. Today's secret word is Pony boy. Today's secret word is pony boy. So at this point, you can either take the exit ticket on your own, or you may continue with me and I will walk you through the multiple choice questions. So this first question that we're going to talk about says, according to the research, what is not a reason teens commit more crime? So we are looking for a wrong answer. We're looking for a wrong answer. They do not always act in ways they should. Is that a right or a wrong answer? I think that's a right answer. They are not often, they're often not able to overcome their emotions. Is that right or wrong? Go back to your text and look. There are differences in the way teen and adult brains are wired. They are faster than adults at attacking criminals. Okay, this one should be really, really straightforward. There are three of these that the article talked about and one of them that just doesn't make sense. What role does the orbital frontal cortex play, play in teens' response to fear? That's this part of your brain. Activity in this area increases when someone avoids acting impulsively. Activity in this area increases when people look at faces. No, this activity, activity in this area increases when someone reacts to a threat. Activity in this area increases when teens show poor impulse control. Okay, in order to get this answer right, all you need to do is go back to that paragraph that we read together. And it honestly, it tells you almost word for word the right answer. So you should be able to go back and pick the correct answer. In paragraph five, the word curb most likely means, I already told you this, I told you what it meant in the paragraph as I was reading it. Um, so does it mean edge, push, reduce, or allow? Go back and you can literally just go back a few minutes in the video and listen to my answer and match it to that. Which detail from the paragraph provides the best clue to the meaning? Okay, so the first one asked us what it meant. This one asked us which words show us what it means in context. So this is the context clues. So increased, successfully avoided, that means like you didn't do it. I'm gonna write the word not. you not doing the thing. I'm not gonna write the thing, but you know what I mean. Pushing the button, 
No, it's not that one. Or reacting inappropriately. So one of these words or one of these phrases tells you what the word curb means. You already know what it means because A, I told you, and B, you got the right answer on the last question. Now you need to tell me which words in the paragraph show you what that word means. Okay, which of the following best describes the central idea of the text? This is the same as the main idea. Okay, so we're looking for the main idea. Teenagers are more impulsive than adults and small children because their brains process information quicker than any other age group. Teenagers are impulsive when faced when a threatening situation because they have not learned how to avoid dangerous situations. That doesn't make sense. Teenage boys are more likely to act violently because they are more impulsive than girls and they do not respect their peers. Does the article say that? I don't think that's a true statement at all. Teenagers are more likely to act impulsively when faced with threatening situations because of the way their brains develop over time. All right, so between A and D, because we know it's not B or C, which one do you think best matches all of the information that's presented in the text? This article suggests that individuals exposed to violence are those who have been shown scary, scary pictures, may have more activity in their orbital frontal cortex, see drops in their intelligence or IQ, maybe teens that develop the strongest impulse control. All right, there is one sentence in this text that literally tells you this answer. When you see more violence or are exposed to violence, then this happens. Go back to the text and find that answer. I will tell you it is not A. Okay, so between B, C, and D, which one do you think is the best? Don't try to guess, go back to the text. Batman approves, good job. You guys did a great job today. I'm so proud of you. I love you, I miss you like crazy. And as always, have a wonderful day. Bye.